All right. Do you have any other questions before we look at some charts together? Charts, charts. Yeah, charts. let's do charts. All right. All right. Our <laughs> point. Yeah, that's Our right. I love point. it. I love it. Hold on one second. Let me pull this one up. Um, so, you know, 538, for those people who uh, don't know, the 538 blog, 538.com, like all in words, is fantastic for pulling data. It's by Nate Silver. Nate okay. Silver, which Andrew talks about constantly in most of... Well, I don't know so much anymore, but like at the, the beginning, he was talking about Nate Silver, you know, giving him props all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one of Nate Silver's early analysis was, hey, this dude is getting way more traction than he should. Therefore, right. like something's going on here kind of thing. And uh, I think Nate was right. So I haven't read this article so that we're we're kind of going to un unbox the chart together. Ooh. <laughs> um, and this one is saying, hey, people often talk about Biden, Warren, Sanders, but they're 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 making the case that it's really a. I'm guessing it's going to be a Biden Warren thing. And if you ask me, in the but the end game, it's going to be a Warren Yang thing. But let's let's take yeah. a look at the first chart they have. Uh, so they they're looking at the post-debate polls, and they're saying in Iowa, and you see Biden is kind of flat at nationally, slightly down uh, in Iowa, whereas Warren is up uh, almost a percentage point, but up almost three percentage points in Iowa, uh, taking the top spot in Iowa for Warren. And then, wow, look, Sanders dropped a little bit, uh, dropped a little bit nationally and even more so in Iowa. Is that your sense, Daniel? Are you feeling like Warren's kind of the the one that people are talking about? <laughs> yes. And as far as like funding, yes. But honestly, when we were in Houston, I couldn't even find a Warren supporter, which was weird. <laughs> So I talked to some ladies and they're like, oh, yeah, we support Warren. I'm like, well, what? There's like no shirts or, you know, swag or anything. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we're not here to support her. We just do like normally. So <laughs> even they weren't even dressed up to support a Warren or wasn't there for it. So, yeah, I guess that's uh, the enthusiasm gap, right? Like I would say people who support Yang are like, it reminds me of when Obama ran, like people are really excited about this candidate. Whereas I think for Warren, you know, it's maybe it's like kind of Hillary minus. It's sort of like <laughs> not yeah. quite as, as fired up for as they were for Hillary, but like, yeah, that. Well, and know. I don't there's the feeling that she's not as progressive as she claims to be, mm. you know, that she's she is really a corporate trill in progressive clothing. So where is that coming from? Cause I'm, I'm kind of surprised cause she's, she's advocating mandatory Medicare for all. She's advocating massive, uh, it's regulation from on banks. Her funding sources. Like she's getting corporate funding uh, is, is where really where it's coming from. Interesting. Yeah. Well, look, looking at, uh, this, this table, Buttigieg is actually up uh, three, almost three points after the Iowa, after the Houston debate in in Iowa polling. Wow, okay. do you, what do you feel? Did you feel on the ground energy for old Buttigieg? Yes, I did. I mean, yeah. there were several people that. I mean, there was nobody like the Yang Gang showing up, but yeah, it was like, and then Julian Julian Castro. Mm -hmm. And Buttigieg, I think, were, and a little bit of Beto, but I think those were the the other, I guess, contenders. Who do you think is going to be the first to um, to drop out on this table? Um, I'm hoping, like, Klobuchar. <laughs> yeah, she's got to go. I mean, she's yeah. put in a good effort. Um, 
but it doesn't seem it seems like she's hit her ceiling, right? Yeah. And she I mean, was in in all the debates. It's not like it's not like Tulsi where she was ex she wasn't in the last debate. So right. She's gotten airtime. And then Castro after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Castro's got to go. Then yeah. everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, I guess I guess the question is like, well, the problem was even if we even if we get a lot of Castro supporters, it's like fighting over crumbs like the dude's only at you know a few percent so um i guess we really have to find a way to break into who do you who of the people that have meaningful support do you think yang gang can kind of get the most traction with well i think we just need to focus on people that aren't politically active because that's our biggest group and I mean, as soon as people really find out about Andrew, they start getting on the Yang, on the Yang gang. So, I mean, I don't think it really even makes any sense to worry about what other camps are doing. We, oh, I we see. Need to carve yeah. out our, our own people. So you're saying there's this other population that are kind of tuned out, right? And those are the ones that we should be uh, focusing on versus pulling off supporters from yeah let's say a book because i mean as soon as somebody gets out of the race because you know their message isn't crystallizing for their american people they're gonna just look around and come over to Andrew Yang naturally so it's not you don't really need to waste all your time on them hey down your audio just changed significantly did you change the setting um, or something no can you hear me better mm. no. maybe no. well Oh, now that's good. That's good. I think we're good now. All right, let's go to the next chart. Okay. Not, oh, sorry, Nate's not to be taken too seriously, tears. So he's got tears one through four. Okay. He's got Biden and Warren. And then he has Sanders, Harris, and Buttigieg. And then he has us in three along with Beto, Cloby, Booker, and Castro. That's, I don't know. I mean, I would say, I guess he's got us listed first on 3A, but I kind of feel like we're on our way to 2B. What do you think? Right. I mean, he's doing better than Harris in California, so, I mean, that's, that's a 2B. Kinda. Yeah, if you're, if you're polling higher than their own senator in right. California, like... That's got to say something. But like you said earlier, the problem is that these early primaries, like we have the most fired up Yang Gang pre re representation, not in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, but in California, <clears throat> Seattle, New York. And I worry a little bit like, well, sh I, I get that there are a lot of people that live in those places, but the decisions are being made in Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina. What What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, that's why I guess phone banking and phone texting are important. So if you're on the Yang Gang in a state that's not one of the swing states, you know, get on the phones. But um, yeah, we know. got work to do. We just, we, yeah, we got work to do. I mean, it would suck. If we have a really weak ass showing in Iowa and South Carolina, but we're turning out like 10,000 people in Seattle, San Fran, and New York, like that just doesn't seem right, right? Like that just seems like it would not be representative. Like I don't, I don't even think it would be good for the party because you end up nominating someone that might be strong in a handful of early primary states, but maybe weak nationally. Well, Andrew keeps showing like new offices opening up in, you know, Iowa and South Carolina and things like that. So that's a good indication if he has enough people to open up an office to do canvassing that, you know, something good things are happening there. Yeah. Well, and uh, everybody should remember if you want to support the Yang campaign. <laughs> Don't forget to donate using the Nerds for Yang challenge link, tinyurl.com slash NFY20. We're actually at, uh, I think, around 
close to 60% of our goal to getting Andrew back on. So everything you donate goes directly to the campaign, but it just gives us a way to uh, basically justify him giving us some time. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Let's go to the next chart. Oh, that's it for that one. Now let's, I have another one though, New York Times. All right, so weekly news coverage. Let's look at this uh, this guy on the right. So, yeah, because Andrew keeps keep saying that he thinks the gang blackout is over, and then Zach's like, I don't know. So, is it? Yeah, I mean, he's go. He's come up. He's up. He he used to be like in the double digits in terms of ranking for news coverage, and now yeah. he's number eight. So who is getting more coverage than him? Cory Booker is getting more, even though he's polling less. So he's polling at two. Yang's at three nationally. Cory Booker's at 2%, but he's getting more coverage. Julian Castro is polling nationally less than 1%. He's number five in coverage. Beto is tied with Yang at 3%, but he's number four in coverage. So I don't know if it's a blackout, but it's probably like a gray out. Um, you know, I mean, but on the other hand, like what it's huge progress. Cause remember, like it used to be just terrible. Like he'd be like at the right. bottom, like behind Steyer and, you know, freaking uh, Moulton and all these other uh, folks who, who were pulling far behind him. Um, if you look at the money race, though, like this is a little bit of a concern, man. Well, luckily, we've got more money than Julian. But as you mentioned, Julian's probably going downtown. So who else do we have more money than other than Julian? That's po that, that's less based on polling. There's Amy at the bottom, right? <laughs> yeah, Amy. Amy's got nine mil and she's polling uh, less than us. Corey's got almost 10 million he's polling less than us um so we are not winning the money race and we don't need to win it but we need to have enough gas in the tank to play the long game you know what i mean yeah yeah that's why i get a please donate email every day from the campaign. yeah seriously <laughs> that's right that's right like oh here's the new challenge yeah i was uh yeah I, I respect it. I mean, it's it it takes money to make this thing work, right? And yeah. here is the national polling trends. I mean, Biden. I feel like I'm waiting for the shoe to drop, where you know people just basically disqualify him because they they just don't think he's got the goods, and he he does something that you know I don't wish for this, but I would not be surprised if this is a very hard job that requires. A lot of, I hate to use the president's words, but stamina. And, and Joe Biden's low energy. You know, Biden, I mean, you saw it in the last debate. The first 45 minutes, he was pretty good. But then yeah. as he was getting tired, like he, the synapses were not firing at the same rate well, in the, as in the first 45 minutes. Uh, on Twitter, I was trying to get the hashtag old man Gaffy Joe trending, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was just me, so it didn't happen. Old man Gaffy Joe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe it'll make a comeback. I don't know. You may want to keep that in your back pocket. I think that... Yeah, might, I, I am. Know? Just if anybody wants to jump on that hashtag with me, just let me know. <laughs> um, I, maybe it could be that people are hesitant because, you know, they kind of like Biden. Like, he's a nice guy. He means well. And they don't want to look like they're kind of... Um, you know, Making putting down, <laughs> yeah, like that, <laughs> or, or, you know, like thou shall not like criticize your fellow party member kind of thing. Um, sure. but at the same time, like if he got the, if he got the nomination, all right, here's the last thing, uh, we'll share before we wrap up Daniel. Oh, we still have, uh, about a hundred, uh, con concurrence. Let's see. Um, this is New Hampshire, Iowa. Oh, Nevada. We never talked about Nevada. What's your sense? Have you been on the ground in Nevada? Yeah, they they have a good gang um, presence. And then I know, uh, who is it? Um, 
Yang for Us creator, the guy, he's a friend of mine, uh, Michael Kim, does these stickers. He's moving to Vegas in order to try to uh, positively affect the elections for Yang in the, in Vegas. So let's see how he we're doing. He, he thinks, thinks it's the best opportunity uh, it, as far as the country goes to, to make a difference in, in Vegas itself because the, the population is concentrated right there. Yeah, for yeah. Well, we need the help. We need all the help we can get, man, because th this table is not a, a beautiful table to look at. Like our national numbers are so much stronger than these early state numbers. Um, yeah. Man, we gotta, we gotta, yeah, you know, we we gotta figure this out. Um, like we're basically one percent in late August, early September, on all four of these um, of these guys. And then we talked about the money. We talked. About, I think our money's gonna look better. Oh, here's the news coverage through September eighteenth. Oh, uh, you know it's you know it's never a good sign when you have to click on the view more. To find your candidate. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. Dude, Tim Ryan? Who is Tim Ryan? Is he still in it? I, I thought he, yeah, I thought he dropped out. Uh, this must be like the uh, li lifetime coverage, like since the beginning of the campaign. So we're, oh. we're still, but that's sad when we're still he trying works. to, we're still we're trying to catch up to someone who's, who like quit. Oh, shoot. Um, yeah, so that's, that's not a great look. You've got 1,129 stories. Castro has almost double. Uh, Klobuchar has like two and a half times. Buttigieg, my God, he's like four times the coverage. And Cory Booker, man, I am so tired of seeing all this exposure for Cory Booker. Like, he has 6,453 mentions versus us at 1,000, and the dude is tied or sometimes behind us. Yeah. That's bullshit. Well, All right. That's why I've been saying Andrew Yang's coming out of nowhere to crush everyone. I mean, the fact, the fact that we're doing so well, I think, is a testament to the enthusiasm of the Yang gang. Sure. And we just got to keep fighting, man, because... They're they're clearly the media, and I don't know about the DNC, but that I would not I would not be shocked if they pull some like 2015 style funny business, you know, like what they did to Bernie when they kind of like didn't let him debate Hillary enough. It's like it would not surprise me if they do some same shit like that to us.